There are so many layers of misogyny there. Welcome back to Behind the Edit, your go-to podcast for unpacking the actual reality behind reality TV. I'm Lachlan Gurdon. And I'm Talia Pritchard. And of course, we have another very special guest today. We had Janelle Hahn from last year's Maths joining us. Yes, there's a lot we have to get through with Janelle. We obviously had the intruder weddings this week. We had a very explosive dinner party. Yeah, God. But first, I want to hear your thumbs up of the week. Okay, I'm dying to talk about this. My thumbs up goes to Madeline and Ash. I am obsessed with them. Do I think they're in love or going to make it work? (laughs) No. The value she's brought so far in her first couple of episodes i'm disappointed we didn't get to see her more in the dinner party because i feel like we could have used her psychic medium skills to unpack some of the stuff that was happening and ash's expressions at every single turn when she's like having a vision or talking to her spirit guides or whatever is just so comical to me i just love what they brought to the show already we've honestly never seen any bride like madeline on the show before (laughs) not only is she a psychic medium she was also an actress on home and away yes and i've heard from some insiders that she was basically trying to produce her time on the show she was asking for close-ups she was trying to talk to the producers and work out her edit in real time which i kind of love i think more people should be aware of that kind of iconic by her and also like we've seen her break the fourth wall numerous times now in the show And if she's just here for kind of acting out a bit of a storyline, I'm here for it. But I'm also, if she is a real psychic medium and she's into that kind of stuff, I would love to have her in. Definitely. (laughs) I would love to hear from my spirit guides. What's your thumbs down? What didn't you love this week? Oh, I guess this isn't shocking, but everything to do with Jack this week. Okay, yeah. Everything to do with the dinner party was tragic. But I think we go into that with our chat with Janelle anyway. I do want to talk about Tristan for okay, a little bit. Yes. Him and Cassandra had a tough week. I struggle with his kind of victim mentality that's seeping in. I don't think we know the full story of him and maybe if he's having some mental health issues on the show or he's, you know, it's a high pressure environment as we know. But every time they seem to be going through an issue, he kind of has this like, well, of course it's my fault mentality. Yeah, okay, yeah. Which comes across very draining and not taking a lot of responsibility for his own actions in the flaws in the relationship and I just don't think it's Cassandra's job to have to get him on a level that he needs to be on to be on a show like this totally it almost feels like the brides come onto the show feeling like the best versions of themselves they're ready to find love ready to settle down and the men that come on the show They've got all these personal issues, which is totally fine. And you have to deal with that. But dealing with that on a reality show and relying on the support of your partner probably isn't the best way to go through with that. The one thing I will say is it's a very accurate depiction of modern day heterosexuality dating. (laughs) So I can't fault them for that. It's accurate. Okay. (laughs) Okay. But what are your thumbs up, thumbs down? I'm going to give my thumbs up surprisingly to Ridge and Jade. Okay. They had an interesting (laughs) wedding, which Janelle gets into, but I did appreciate that Ridge was open with Jade and didn't care that she had a child. I think he was obviously- Probably he's just about to find a new best friend. (laughs) True. But I think there would have been some jeopardy in that she was worried how he would react to her having a daughter already. By the looks of his kind of intro package, they made it seem like he wouldn't be happy with that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But he had a really mature response and I think that they're a great relationship. I think they'll have a great time in the experiment. I'm excited to see what's to come. On the flip side of that, I'm going to give my thumbs down to Stephen and Michael. They are the first gay couple on the show since 2020, since Amanda and Tash. My only reason why I didn't love it was because it's clear that Stephen was brought in as a replacement groom. Mm -hmm. We talk about this with Janelle, but I just don't think it's entirely fair to have such a monumental first gay couple in four seasons. It's pretty big that they're going through the diversity and I love to see the representation on screen. Mm. But the fact it has been done in a way that doesn't seem like it's set up to work. It feels just like it's set up to fail from the start, which I don't love. Yeah. Do you feel like them rushing to find a replacement and just bringing this guy in if he hasn't applied and stuff feels more tokenistic than it does authentic? Totally. I mean, obviously, Simon was Michael's original groom. They were paired together. They Mm. might have been a great match. But then Simon quit, so they had to find him a replacement. Here comes Stephen. 
but I don't know if Steven was genuinely matched with Michael and if they will be a successful match because he hasn't gone through the same process. They might not be compatible, but right now I'm just not getting the greatest vibes. We'll have to wait and see. That's a very good point. Also on the topic of runaway grooms, I spoke to 2017's runaway bride, Lauren Bran, earlier. Yes, okay. And we're going to play some snippets from the interview at the end of this podcast, but she had some really interesting stuff to say about why someone would up and leave the show very dramatically or very fast. Um, So I'll play that for you later. Yes, I'm very interested to hear Lauren's thoughts because I think it'll give us an insight into why Simon might have left the show after the Bucks party. Absolutely. But before we get into that, let's play our chat with Janelle Hart. Thank you so much for joining us today, Janelle. Thank you for having me. (laughs) What are your vibes on the new season so far? I am really enjoying this new season. Like the drama from it felt like episode one has been crazy. It's definitely been a main source of entertainment for me. (laughs) That's fair. Who are your faves so far? Who are you liking? Who are you not liking? Who are my faves? I mean everyone loves Lucinda for the right reason. Like she is so patient and thoughtful and caring. Lucinda, if you're watching this, let me give you a makeover one day. (laughs) That would be iconic. No, I want to give a makeover to, is her name Nat? Yeah. Nat, yeah. I want to give a makeover to Nat because it broke my heart when she was talking about how she didn't feel like she fit in with the rest of the girls and she wasn't meeting Australia's beauty standard. And on my season, I very much experienced that. So girl, if you want a little glow up, I got you. Are you seeing any similarities at all between your season with storylines with the participants compared to this season? I think the storylines in both seasons are similar. However, very different at the same time. The one that I can reflect on the most with is Ellie's cousin. Was that his cousin? He was very involved in helping Ellie choose the right partner and uh, my brothers were the same. So I think when I was watching back, I just thought, no, this cousin is a G. He's doing the hard work for Ellie. Like he's not afraid to look like a bit of a bad guy if it means he's doing right by his cousin. And I thought that was so valuable and I don't understand why that gets criticised so much. I think even the way the cousin spoke to Ben wasn't in a rude way. I think he was asking very direct questions which were valid based on the information he was given. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Speaking of your brothers and the input they had um, during your arc, I guess, on the show, was that pre-discussed with producers or was it when you were filming and they were kind of coming in that they knew they would be good talent for your wedding? Oh, they 100% knew my brothers were going to be great TV. And the entire interview process was what are your values? What's important to you? And I made it very, very clear that family was important to me and what my family thinks of my partner is important to me. So you can just think that in the producers' minds, they're like, ding, this is our storyline. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it was very much pre-planned and I can see it. Because I was thinking with some of the couples this season two, their family seems to be appearing more. We've had like mm. Jono's stepsister popped up. We've had the groomsmen kind of play these roles that we saw in one of the intruder weddings too. Mm-hmm. The groomsmen have these kind of like, real bro-y attitude with Ridge For and I was sure. like where like or oh, how soon in the process is that discuss that they know they're going to be like well let me drop some tea yeah so when I gave my list of people that I wanted to attend my wedding um, I also had to put down my relationship with them and like how long I've known them for. So what they do is that they actually called up all my bridesmaids and my immediate family to ask about the other guests, who's the biggest loudmouth, who's the one that's most likely to speak up, like and the people that I guess got mentioned the most were the only people that got mic'd up. So my brothers really? were mic'd up and my maid of honour was mic'd up and yeah, my parents as well because I guess they were the ones that were going to be saying the most tv worthy things <laughs> interesting oh, i feel like we so saw sense. that at sarah and tim's wedding where she had her own bridesmaids but then there was just a random friend that was that got mic'd, mic'd up. up that's right so uh, clearly she was the drama starter I mean, and the think back to that. bronte and harrison's wedding like the pink dress yeah jess yeah she was mic'd up but she wasn't even a bridesmaid or a relative mm. so you can see everything is very intentional on maths which i don't hate because it makes for good tv <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? The snooping. All my bridesmaids called me straight away being like, I had to tell the producer who the most outspoken one of us was. It was really weird. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> Would they be putting themselves forward then? Like, did any of your friends think, okay, this is my chance for reality TV. Yes, I'll be the most outspoken and dramatic. I mean, to be honest, my friends hate the attention. They, okay. they upload on Instagram maybe once a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think they probably all threw each other under the bus a little bit because none of them wanted to get mic'd up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So this week on Maths, we've seen the intruder weddings. You were gone, right, by the time the intruder weddings were happening for your season? I attended the intruder weddings, but I left the week after. Okay. So I left around this period. <laughs> yeah. What was it like for you, I guess, attending the weddings? Whose wedding were you at? I attended Evelyn and Rupert's wedding, which was hilarious. Yep. Yes, Rupert is awkward. He's not as awkward as a TV made out to <laughs> yeah. be, but he was definitely awkward. <laughs> When you attend an intruder wedding, it's a completely different feeling because you've literally been in their shoes. Yep. So you know how they're feeling. You know how awkward it is to walk down the aisle multiple times. You know how awkward it is when the ring doesn't fit and you're trying to mush it onto your finger. It's just so awkward. But when you sit there, you feel a sense of relief. You feel like, okay, my relationship's all right because I'm seeing this new one blossom. It gives so much fresh perspective. I think, yeah, having intruders, great call by maths. Okay, because yeah. I feel like a lot of people would say that the intruders, I mean, it's purely just for drama. They come in later. There's not mm. as much of a chance that they will build a relationship. But did you see that there was a benefit in having them to compare your oh. own relationship? Oh, there's such a benefit to the intruders. So, for example, if the intruder couple is not doing very well and you see the issues that you've already gone through and they're going mm. through now, it kind of validates your feelings okay. and how you're sitting in your relationship or vice versa. If you're seeing a relationship not turn out very well, especially an intruder relationship, it gives you a sense of like, oh my God, like I've been there. I know how this feels and it validates your feelings. However, if the relationship is going well, it's going to make you question your own relationship. Why am I not there yet? Okay. What, do I, what actions do I need to take to get to this stage faster? So yeah, I think it's, it, senses, it gives a lot of purpose for reflecting. Was it almost boring attending the intruder weddings? Like you don't have much of a storyline to play with yourself. Mm. Are you just sitting there enjoying it? Or is it like, oh. okay, when can I go? I loved attending the intruder weddings because okay. the spotlight wasn't on me or yeah. the other mm. couples. It was purely just letting your hair down and attending a wedding. And it was so much fun. There was so much waiting though. I think we waited in the bus for like two hours. It was ridiculous. Damn. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we get into this season's intruders, first we have Michael and Stephen. <sighs> Michael was obviously paired with Simon originally, but then Simon quit the show after the Bucks party. So he was repaired, brought back as an intruder. What are your thoughts on them as a couple? Mm. Um, can we just first talk about the intruders like snapshot from the promo pictures and how it completely differed from the other pictures? Yes. That was horrendous. I just know he did not attend the promo day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but then they had to edit everyone else's photo to match his, which just made it super oversaturated and crazy. Because it's assumed that, I guess, yeah, Simon didn't attend the promo mm. day. They just used his photo maybe from his suit fitting and that's what was used <laughs> on the cast announcement. When does the promo day take place? The promo day takes place around it's around the same week as when the intruders come so the intruders can do their photos too okay yeah so it's all just done it's around this time, time. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um sorry what was your question originally michael was, and steven oh, yeah. michael and steven are the cutest couple ever i really want it to work out but yeah was it steven the long-haired guy yep mm -hmm. um when Stephen made that comment about feeling like he was second best that made no sense to me no i thought the same because yeah. i was like i would take it as a sign that it was all going to work out for the right reasons. Right? Yeah. Like, and also because Michael hadn't met the other groom, so there's no competition. He just exactly. pulled out. Exactly. But I do think that he has some deeply rooted insecurities there, maybe a trauma from the past, maybe he's been cheated on. I'm yeah. going to defend Stephen. I saw the other perspective where oh. obviously if you're brought in at the last minute, maybe it's not I feel second best to your original match, but you'll still feel like, well, I wasn't originally intended to be on the show. I was brought in last minute. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that he was only recruited from Instagram, didn't apply or like didn't go through the full wow. application process and it was only given a couple weeks notice. So maybe in his head, he's like, I thought that happened with everyone. I thought the same oh. would have happened for you. But then when he realizes, wait, Michael has been through this whole process. Yeah. He's been kind of like waiting for someone like mm. Stephen to show up. And now Stephen's just like the random mm. guy that they use to fill in. Mm. That's where I kind of got his perspective. Like, damn, that would suck that you're just the fill in. I totally see that as well, because a lot of common discussions within the maths cast, even during filming was you were paired for me or I was actually paired for you. And so in Stephen's case, he's now he knows he was paired for Michael and not the other way around. True. Obviously, I like to pray and hope that you're paired for equal reasons but in this case it's very obvious that Stephen was brought on for Michael yeah that's true I guess that's mm. the positive way to look at it that he was specifically chosen for yeah. Michael rather than an application pool where they just randomly exactly. paired together okay. but, but, now, way, but now Stephen doesn't feel like the main character true <laughs> well, that's true I was gonna say his insecurities probably shouldn't lie with Michael though because Michael has no responsibility over the choosing yeah true it's not Michael's fault. so it's like 
a producer insecurity yeah. potentially. And that's exactly right. The responsibility does not lie in Michael at all. Another intruder couple was Jade and Ridge. There was a lot to go on at their wedding, especially with their bridal party. What were your initial thoughts on them as a couple, though? Oh, my God. What was that the word that they said? Deuce. Deuce. Uh, Deuce. I can't. The frat boy energy was the perfect way to describe that. Um, I really dislike any male that feels the need to call themselves an alpha male. Like, if you need to say it, you're just not. You know, Um, and if you live at home with your parents, like how much of it, you know, the alpha stereotypes to be a provider and a protector and whatever. It's like mum's making your bed. What are you talking about? (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) (laughs) No, but literally, I just think that if you're going to call yourself an alpha male, are you living independently? Are you succeeding in life? Like, are you extremely confident? And I don't think alpha male necessarily needs to be like, I'm this strong, opinionated person. It can be someone who owns their confidence, owns their their heart, their mind, like everything. So, yeah. If you have to yell out Deese to your wife, like, mm, in the bin. <laughs> Rather than us saying Deese, I want to play the clip of him saying it just so it really sinks in how gross it sounds. <laughs> I know the experts had their work cut out finding me the perfect match, but now, boys, give us a deece. Deece. I'm not sure about the deece. It's just the, it's the facial expression that goes with it as well. You know, <laughs> like this extremely hot woman is walking down the aisle and you don't have the decency to say, you look beautiful, you have kind eyes, you have a beautiful smile. Like, no, you're deece. It's like a backhanded compliment in a way. And then, yeah, the the dismissive, like, geez, it's just, it's giving ick. It's, it's giving ick. What would you do in that situation if you were at the altar and then that happened? I probably would have looked at him and up and down and just been like, eh. <laughs> 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 I'd throw one back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we are talking before about guests at the wedding. When you get married on the show, how much weight do you put on the wedding guests and the people that your match surrounds themselves with? Like when you're meeting your partners, friends and family and whatever it may be. Oh, when I am looking at my husband, I am 100% looking at their guest as well. Because who you surround yourself with is an extension of who you are as a person. So, yeah, that's a huge thing. I actually remember for my wedding, my husband didn't have any family members. And that kind of gave me a few alarm bells as well. So... I thought the same thing when I saw Jack had no friends and family. He had just clients. I was like, okay, either this man's entire life is work or he can't hold a relationship. Yeah. What's Friendship. better in your eyes than someone bringing their clients as their friends or someone like Ridge who is bringing his frat bros? I think whether it's frat bros or clients, they're still kind of red flags. They are... If you can't have one long-term friendship, that says so much about you. Yeah, I fully agree with that. You fully agree? Yeah, yeah. I fully agree with that. I mean, like, even his bridal party were clients. Like, yeah. I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> you do you, boo. If they are genuinely your friends, you're obviously very good at your job. Do you think anyone's protecting their actual real friends from just being on the show? Maybe? I do believe that if family members don't attend, it's because they chose not to be. I definitely had family members who opted out of my wedding because they didn't want to be in the limelight Mm -hmm. or didn't want to be open for criticism. And yeah, that's completely understandable. But if that is then discussed and shared, then of course, that's a valid reason. With Ridge and Jade, there's kind of been a spoiler that we know the fate of their relationship. I don't know. Yahoo has been sent a photo of Ridge and Jade going in for the kiss on New Year's Eve, which to me obviously says that they make it through the experiment. They were still going strong by December, January. So we will oh, see if I'm they're shocked. still together once the show ends. But I would love to know what are the rules that the participants must follow when it comes to keeping relationships a secret while the show's airing. So the rules that Nine give you, especially when the show is done and aired and you're out in the public and you've been leaked or whatever, you must wear your wedding ring at all times so you don't ruin anything, the storyline for your viewers. You also, you know, when you get opportunities like this to sit with media, you also get told to imagine how you felt at that time as the show is airing. So there were a lot of interviews that I had to do where I knew the end result, obviously, of my relationship, but I had to sit there and be like, no, we're doing so well. We're getting to know each other, blah, 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 blah. 
So yeah, you you have to pretend that you're still in that relationship until you officially leave that show. That on must air. be so hard. Do you ever like? You must be so worried that you're going to slip up at any point and use past tense or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, I did do a podcast with another platform where I was using past tense a lot. And when I watched <laughs> it back, I was like, oh, God, this is uh, – anyone can look between the lines here. But, yeah, it is it's so easy to accidentally slip up. But, um, yeah, I think a lot of the times you're – I wouldn't say coached by Channel 9, but they do give you advice on how to say things, especially if there is a leak from the show out in the media at the time. You're kind of coached on how to brush it off and not focus on that. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, before we get into my favourite chaotic intruder couple, let's take a quick break and then we've got another clip to show you. So my favourite intruder couple of this season so far is Madeline and Ash. (laughs) She used to be an actress in Home and Away and now she's a psychic medium. Are you um, feeling her vibes? Do you think she's uh, got the real ability and skill? Um, look, if she truly believes it and, you know, that fulfills her in her life, then you do you, boo. I personally am a bit of a sceptic, need to see it to believe it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean... To be honest, I reckon she just went on Facebook, found his profile and saw that he went to a dead ball like 10 years ago. <laughs> we need to unpack that moment on the honeymoon. Here's the clip for you. Are you ready for like people going to be asking questions? Oh, I feel you. you I, hopefully you're ready for it because it's going to come. Did you go to a dead ball? <laughs> yes, I did. What happened at this dead ball? We she danced. seems so proud that she got this did knowledge. Did something bad happen? No. She's digging. Not on my Deb, no. Why? <laughs> you getting Deb vibes? Yeah, I'm getting Deb ball vibes. No, no. No one I know has been to a Deb ball. I had oh, a Deb ball when I was 16. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just like, what happened to this Deb ball? I want to, like, it's related oh, to this. It's related to us. I remember anything bad happening. Well, did you get into an altercation? I can't Tell the truth. I can't remember. Oh, okay, I can't remember. Oh, no. You know what it is? Yes, I know. Thank you. Hold that on. Sorry, yes. they're talking to me now. Hold on. I love you. Yes, and they don't like me doing this. I love you. Hold on. Who's she saying I love you to? To the psychic messages the that spirit- she was getting. The messages. The spiritual guides, yes. Oh. Do you think something happened at the dead ball? <laughs> <laughs> I do think something happened at the dead ball because he was quite dismissive about the topic and was giving very short answers. However, she was asking very specific questions, whereas... Girl, you're psychic. Ask for the details from the messengers. <laughs> it is pretty iconic that she could pick up that he went to a dead ball. Like, no one that I know has been to a dead ball. So that's a good pick up. It is very oddly specific. I guess it depends how much she knows about him already, though. Because mm. if he grew up in the country, for example, and then maybe you've done a bit of a social media stalk, you could maybe assume, given his age, that he would have gone to a dead ball. And that's so true. Maybe it's like demographically something common to him. And whether or not he attended that dead ball, he's probably familiar with the term. True. But like, yeah, so specific. Something but weird happened. Something d- weird definitely happened. I kind of, like, it would be such a great storyline if it popped up again in like a couple <laughs> weeks being like, well, at my dead ball. <laughs> I would love that. Because I don't think full anyone's talked moment. about a dead ball in years and now they've just become relevant again. <laughs> Australia did dead balls like <laughs> like country Australia feels yeah. like that's what they do oh God. so an insider has actually told us that Madeline is putting on an act just to spice things up for the show basically so... um and that she is acting and using it to relaunch her career do you buy the fact that she could be planted on the show as an actress I see I don't know if I believe in producers planting actors, but I do believe that there are people out there who are willing to collaborate with the producers. And I think she might be one of those. If Madeline is putting on an act, well, then honestly, that is like Oscar worthy because I'm kind of low key believing it as she's doing it. And real or not, it's freaking entertaining. <laughs> was there anyone in your season that you were suspicious was a producer plant? Because apparently on this season, people were very sus on Madeline. Oh, interesting. I mean, I can't pinpoint anyone in my season that was a producer plant, but I do think that a lot of them did, yeah, communicate very well to the producers mm. about what was needed. Do you want to name any names or...? I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> <laughs> leave the fifth. Yeah, leave the fifth. 
Well, on that, let's take a quick break and then get into the dinner party. Oh, I'm so excited for the dinner party. (laughs) So the big drama at this week's dinner party was that Lauren had found out through her husband, Jono, that Jack was telling the guys he hopes there's a couple swap this season so one of the grooms can sleep with Tori, his wife, and he doesn't have to. (gasps) Huge. Also disgusting. That is... If you heard something like that, because in Lauren's case, she heard it from her husband, not directly from Jack or Tori, would you go up to your friend Tori? How would you handle that situation? I mean, I handled everything on maths in a way that kind of upset the viewers, which was not confrontationally. So I would personally pull Tori aside and let her know what's being said about her, whether or not it's true. But she should definitely be aware that that is being said. 100%. So Lauren does pull Tori aside at the cocktail party, but then she decides to confront Jack on the dinner table in front of everyone else. Here's the clip. Did you say it or did you not say it? I did not say I wasn't attracted to him. So he's lying. We talk about everyone's relationships. I would never go home and say something to my wife that I don't need to say. Don't come at him. We all have... I'm not talking to you, Lauren. Shut your mouth. Can you muzzle your woman? Muzzle your woman? Oh. Wow. Wow. Oh. Oh. Don't f*** off to like that. Yes, Jono. What? Guys, Chaos. come on. I'm glad that everyone's disgusted as well. There's things you can't say, and that oh, is one go, of them. Timothy. If that was anyone saying that to Jade, I would have lost it. I absolutely lost it. Valid. It's the way that he said it as well. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't... It was, using a, it was used as a weapon. Can mm. you muzzle your woman? Mm. There are so many layers of misogyny there that is just unbelievable. Firstly, muzzle your woman. You're dehumanising the woman to an animal. And then not to mention muzzling is, let's just say it, it's an act of violence to silence your woman. Like you want them to be obedient. Like, oh, it's disgusting on so many levels. And yeah, it's the way that he used it as a weapon as well that I'm shocked by too. Yeah. Yes, it's very aggressive. And also Jack earlier on when he talks about, you know, being matched with someone and obviously he's the alpha and all that bullshit. But he goes, he talks about wanting a woman to challenge him too. And we see Lauren there challenging him to like spit out the truth essentially. And he goes so low in that moment and so aggressive in that moment too, yeah. in my opinion anyway. Definitely you so low handle aggressive. It. It's just crazy, but you're so right. When men say they want a woman to challenge them, it means that they want this woman to challenge them, but then bend over straight afterwards. Yeah, but yeah, not on their terms, right? Yes, <laughs> bending over, not on their terms. That's exactly what I would say too. It's crazy. What was really interesting was that after the whole muzzle your woman comment, Tori didn't side with her friend Lauren. She actually defended Jack and said that his comment about wanting a couple swaps so she could sleep with another groom was their sense of dark humor. And that was something that he would have said to her privately. So she didn't really care. And she was more angry that Lauren had decided to make a scene at the dinner party rather than pulling her aside when the cameras weren't there or texting her. So it was a very interesting dynamic. And I just don't think that using the term dark humor lets you get away with it. If that was said to me as a joke, I still wouldn't accept that. Like, I feel like there's a lot of underlying things that need to be unpacked from that as well. But who knows? I don't want to be someone who judges how a couple's relationship works. Maybe they're into swinging. Who knows? I'm I'm staying out of that one. (laughs) But yeah, even using dark humor as an excuse, there's nothing funny you can pick out of that. Nothing funny about that. Where's the punchline? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No one on the table is laughing at this. Dark humor or disrespect, let's be real. (laughs) The other interesting element was that Jack then came for Jono for breaking the bro code. And what he had told him at the gym was then told to Lauren and he thought that that was betraying his trust. Do you think that the bro code can exist on maths or is it just expected that whatever you tell your friends will get back to your partner eventually? Oh, God. I'm a seasoned professional when it comes to the rules of bro code from my season. So (laughs) let's unpack that. Um, I think that the bro code is, you know, it's just a label of strong friendship. And I think that is fine because females have very strong friendships as well. But even behind closed doors, I think when females are talking about behaviours, we can do it in a very sensitive way. However, I think that sometimes when alpha males like to have a little bit of a bro-scussion, 
It can get. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I hate that as well. <laughs> it can get really disgusting, and that's I think the biggest difference here is that if you're going to have the bro code, that's fine. But if you're going to say something that you don't want to be repeated, then don't say it. Every week we ask our guests who they would kiss, who they would marry, and who they would leave from this season of the show. Okay. Who's on your list? All right. Let's start with. Was it kill? No yes. killing involved. No, kiss. it was kiss, marry, and <laughs> Off leave. Off camera, we'll talk. Okay. Or leave. I'm going to put three. Is that allowed? It's. I make the rules yeah. now. All right. Um, I would. Jack is right up there. Uh, number two would be Timothy. I think he's rubbing his nose into everyone's business in a very aggressive way, and I think he's giving absolutely no attention to to Lucinda, who is being so patient. And then we have Ben, who is a hundred percent on there to promote this podcast good luck bro <laughs> i love it because no one knows what the podcast is either no it's the fact that he hasn't even denied it that just kills me as well anyways <laughs> <laughs> poor ellie um okay marry no we'll do kiss first okay who would i kiss i would kiss tim i do think that he's tried to handle his situations the best that he can and i think he's a very good looking man um and i would marry Jono. Jono is really standing up for whatever he thinks is right, despite a bro code, and I really respect that. And to wrap up, we also have an honesty box question for honesty you. Honesty box, okay. The famous honesty box is coming back ah, from the dead. It's giving deja vu. <clears throat> Bit of ASMR for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's always said that people go on maths to boost their profiles. How much would you say maths actually helped your influencer career? Oh, that's a great question. Very great question. I would be an idiot to say that it hasn't helped my career. However, I wouldn't say it's helped it as much as me actually moving to Sydney has helped, if you know what I mean. So I was lucky enough to be a beauty content creator before the show. So I already worked with really well-renowned brands who I had really good relationships with. And I continued to work with those brands post-show too. I would say the biggest difference is that my follower count probably went up a little bit. So therefore my rates went up a little bit too. So thanks maths. <laughs> would you have moved to Sydney, do you think, if you hadn't gone on maths? If I hadn't gone on maths, I probably would have made a move to Sydney, but not as long as I would have stayed as if I'm staying now. I probably would have done like a three month stint in Sydney or something like that. So in a way maths has helped me fast track my decisions in progressing my career as opposed to just sitting in Perth and in my little room filming makeup videos. <laughs> I know you said you were previously approached to be on The Bachelor. Yeah. Would you ever go on another reality show now that you've been through maps? Look, I can't say I would choose a dating show anymore because I can't fathom being on a show 24-7 where the only source of thought has to be how do I make this relationship work? Yeah. I would so prefer if that mental energy came into something a bit more productive like Celebrity Apprentice or The Block or Travel Guides where you're doing something fun. You get to show your personality as opposed to the difficulties of a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> what about Survivor or something? Like a challenge kind of show. I'm a celeb. Those oh, are. I would love to do one of those challenge shows, but I would suck. I would <laughs> really suck. Like, firstly, I have lupus. So I don't think I'd be allowed to go on Survivor, but... Who knows? I have a very competitive streak in me, though. So it'd be fun. If so I had true. to eat a bug on TV, though, that, that ain't happening. I'm, <laughs> I would cry the entire time. <laughs> yeah, so I would too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, Janelle. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. So you've interviewed Lauren Brand yes. from season four. She was the runaway bride. Tell me everything. Okay, so people might remember in season four, it was kind of the season that really started to make maths really dramatic. Yeah. So the ads and the promo even back then was this big runaway bride moment. So she married Andrew Jonesy Jones and everything seemed to go okay at the wedding. And then the next day she was gone, bolted, done and dusted. She came back for the reunion, but there was like a lot of like unspoken things that seemed to have happened that we didn't really get to see so when Simon never showed up or pulled out before his wedding, I thought, who else to have a really good perspective on why you would pull out after going through the whole process yep. of applying for maths than Lauren? So I'll play you what she had to say. I was extremely under pressure. We have to do a lot of back filming before actually um, the show starts 
in terms of we do the proper filming with the wedding and everything like that. So we're investing time whilst we're working and having to actually film like over a few days, you have to get permission off the places that you film. It's very difficult. We actually have to go and source our dresses, bridesmaids dresses. We get allocated money um, to do that. But with, for my instance, I didn't want to wear that dress. The dress that I wore was apparently the twins actually were wearing a similar dress. So I was in something that I didn't feel comfortable in for, for one. They come in with a like, a camera, a small little camera, and they want you to lay on the bed, they want you to kiss. We didn't really, you know, kissed on the cheek. Um, and it was just very uncomfortable. And they push you to do things that I suppose are out of your comfort zone. We had to do a lot of photography and the photos of us together with our mics on. So you're constantly being followed by the producers and getting even toilets, they follow you to the bloody toilet. <laughs> and it, you're just, you're working long days for, you know, obviously peanuts. Okay, she does make a great point that just because Simon was only attending the Bucks party doesn't mean that was his only day of filming. Yeah, so that's what I found the most interesting part too because you don't factor in all the back filming. Obviously, when you hear that, it makes more sense why someone would just tap out. They don't know fully what they've signed up for. That also was seven years ago, seven seasons ago. Yeah. So it was a completely different show then. I think from season three to season four, they also completely changed their format as well, right? So she might not have fully known what the show was at that time. For this season though, Simon should have had probably a better idea of what the show was because it is season 11. Also a great point. But it's interesting to hear Lauren's perspective on why she quit. Maybe one day we'll hear Simon's as well. Simon, if you're listening, <laughs> come on behind the edit. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Behind the Edit. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave us a five-star review. You can follow us on all our socials, join our exclusive Facebook group, and sign up to Yahoo's maths newsletter. All the links will be in the show notes. We'll see you next week. Behind the Edit is brought to you by Yahoo Australia, hosted by Lachlan Gurton and Talia Pritchard, produced by Katie Brown, social production by Alexa Tubertini. Yahoo Australia would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded and pay our respects to elders past and present.